Hi stationary friends and welcome to Ginger Peachy Stationery. My name is Sarah and today I just want to share with you a few things that I have acquired in the last week or so. Um, I placed an order a couple of weeks ago, nope not one order, a, a couple of orders over the course of a few days um, a few weeks ago and then ended up being out of town for a couple of weeks with a family emergency and so um, wasn't home to receive these packages and so when I got home I had three four little packages um, nothing too crazy but I thought I would share what I've got so um, anyway first of all let's start with an order from lemur ink um, I have ordered from lemur a few times I think they are fantastic because um, they ship for free over $20 and that is just really exciting for me. So um, this is a little note that I received from John at Lemur and he sends a sticker, which I will stick in my um, Hobonichi. Um, so from John, I ordered, from Lemur Inc., I ordered the Twisby Eco in Purple Glow. Is it called Purple Glow or is it called Glow Purple? I think it's Purple Glow. Um, here is this pen. I am loving it. I think that this pen is gorgeous. I love, 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 love this translucent purple. Um, I don't even care that it glows in the dark. Like, I really don't. Um, it's cool, sure, but like, I'm not usually, you know, reaching for my pens in the dark, but I love this color so much. Um, I already had the, I want to say it's called Magenta Twisby Eco. Um, you know, a lot of non-pen people would look at these and say, Hey Sarah, why do you need both? <laughs> and to that I would say they are very different, <laughs> but I love this color. I have said before that this one reminds me of jelly and I don't mean like grape jelly. I mean like, um, like jelly sandals, you know, like I'm a kid of the nineties, eighties, nineties and jelly sandals were all the rage. Well, this one looks even more like jelly. And I love it. I love it, love it, love it. So I've been enjoying this for a few days. I bought it with a fine nib. i um, still been enjoying my fine nibs lately. Um, here it is, uncapped. Um, I, you guys have seen these before. Um, it's got the red finial, of course. And I decided to ink it with Papier Plume Snowball Party Plum, um, which is a little darker, of course, but um, not of course, but <laughs> it's a little darker but it's a really good match. Um, the lighter tones in this ink are really very similar to this pen. Um, I cannot see my phone to see <laughs> how like well I'm in frame. I have it on my watch, but like then when I turn my hand over, I can't see it. So um, I hope that I do okay. Anyway, pretty good match here and I'm enjoying this. Um, this ink is a little bit dry, but it's not too dry. So when I write on you know, most papers, this ink comes out a little bit lighter than what you see here. Um, but that's okay. I'm, it flows well. It's not too dry where it's like hard starting or scratchy or anything. Um, and it's a really nice combination. So I'm enjoying my new Twisby Eco. Um, the other thing from Lemur was, oh, was the J. Herbon ink, which I'll share in just a moment. Um, the other pen that I purchased is from Woodshed Pen Company. Uh, Mike Allen of Woodshed Pens um, recently announced that he would not be making pens anymore. He is moving on to other endeavors. And so he was clearancing out all of his inventory. He had three of these pens. Um, and what is funny is that I purchased this one. Um, and then one of my good uh, pen friends on Instagram popped up on Instagram. <laughs> Um, a few days later and showed off her new pen and she bought the same one. So I just love that. Um, she, she had no idea that I was getting this one because I was out of town. So I had not opened it. I had not shared it. And I said, I got the same one. And so <laughs> we are pen twins. And, um, that makes me really happy. There were only three left and she and I bought two of the three. So anyway, um, this pen, I don't think it has a name. Like I, have never seen like a name of the style of pen that um, that Mike made. Are we in frame at all? I think so. <laughs> um, all of the, all three of the pens that I've had from him are the same shape pretty much. He did update the shape of the grip section. It's a little more flared 
Um, my other woodshed pen that I still own, I sold the, the third one that I had. This one is not, um, can you see that? It is not as flared out. It's a little more straight. Um, I really don't have a big preference. Really, if you ask me to really choose one, I would probably choose this shape over this one because I kind of tend to to um, put my fingers a little further down on the grip. But this is still great. Um, it doesn't have a color name. It's I call it black, brown, and white woodshed pen. So um, it is really pretty. Um, I was very happy to get it for fall. Um, he just shipped it in this little uh, velvet case. And because it was clearance, uh, clearanced, you know, he was, he was clearancing out his inventory. It did not come with a nib. I was surprised that he did include a converter. So I was very happy with that. Um, but, uh, I had to order a nib. So let me see. Um, and, uh, let's see. So I ordered a nib from Pen Realm. Um, here's a little sticker that he sent and he sends his card. Kirk Spear is his name, um, which I did know before I <laughs> showed you that car card. Um, and he sends a little note to you saying he hopes I enjoy the nib. So that's really awesome. I love getting those little personal notes. And, um, I just bought, um, uh, the nib came in one of these little ink file things with a little piece of tissue down in the bottom. So not fancy, but Hey, gets the job done and not too much packaging to like have to deal with later, you know? Um, just a very plain, uh, fine nib. I don't know how well you can see that, but he, um, tuned and smoothed, you know, did the tune and smooth thing. So it is a great little fine nib and I have it inked up with Pelican Edelstein Smoky Quartz, which I will also show you in just a moment. Um, so the last, but not least thing that I ordered was eight ink samples from Goulet pens. Um, I really wanted, I almost bought Ferris wheel press lady rose, a whole bottle of it on fountain pen day when it was on sale. Um, I think it's still like, I could still get it 20% off right now, but I just wanted to try it first. So, cause it, Ferris wheel press inks, um, are gorgeous, but they are expensive to me. Um, so anyway, uh, Goulet of course sends their wonderful card and look at this pretty sticker. I really like this one. Um, it's got a pilot decimo on it, um, with like the Sakura flowers. Is there a pilot decimo? Somebody tell me, is there a decimo with the flowers on it? Because I really want one of those. Um, anyway, pretty little sticker that I will use. Um, so I thought I would just kind of, uh, you can see I have little stacks of these cards here. So I thought I would sort through these and like show you some comparisons. These are all inks that I've never tried before, brand new to me. And so um, I thought we could just kind of go through them together really quickly. Let me grab a little container and I'm gonna throw these bottles in it. Um, all of them were a regular sample size, except I did buy the little, the little 10 mils of the Airbon ink um, and I promptly overflowed it when I stuck the pen down in there. So that's that, um, but that's okay, I don't mind. I have probably spilled three or four of my Airbon inks over the years. So um, I'm gonna move these out of the way just to give us a little space. Try to knock them, not knock them off with my elbow. And we will start with that J. Airbon ink, Cafe des Des Iles. I did not realize it had an S. Des Iles. That's a different ink color, but that's okay. Um, so this is a really beautiful red brown. Um, I did not have a great experience with this. I this was the first ink that I put in this pen. Um, I tried it out, and it felt like almost I want to say gloppy <laughs> going into the pen. Um, and then it just like, it wouldn't flow well. It was like, I don't know, I couldn't get it to flow. And then I posted about it on Instagram and someone else said, this is my nightmare ink. And I was like, okay. So, um, going through my other samples, it is quite similar to Monteverde pumpkin cake. Um, it is a similar red brown. Um, I had also not the most wonderful experience with pumpkin cake, the first pen I put it in. 
And so I have now tried it in a broader nib and that seems to work better. But you can see even, I want, you know, I'm not an expert on ink, but how this one, like the color, when I use the paintbrush, it like has an even gradient all the way down. And this one just looks smudgy and gl gloppy is the word I want to use. So um, anyway, let's do a little comparison here. Let me see if I can, I don't know if I want to zoom in a little bit, maybe. Let's see how we can get right here. Okay. I'm just using my phone and I know y'all can probably hear my neighbor's music outside. Um, so here is that new, to me, J.R. Bond ink and the pumpkin cake. Those are pretty similar. Um, Pelican Edelstein Smoky Quartz is one of my favorite browns and you can see that it's a lot greener, yellow greener than this one. And same, this one is a lot yellower. This is Airbonne's Lit de Te. And it is also a lot more yellow. Um, I would say I probably prefer these colors, um, as in just colors, but these work really great in all my pens. So I lean towards these and the smoky quartz is so brown that, I mean, so dark that usually the dark color is what I see, not this light, light yellowy brown color. Um, I actually recently just stumbled up on a brand new bottle of this for sale somewhere and I went ahead and grabbed it um, because it is the brown that I just keep putting in pens. And so I went ahead and grabbed a second bottle. Um, so we're just gonna hope that I can, you know, use it up and uh, actually need that new bottle at some point. Let's see, okay. Um, secondly, Ferris Wheel Press Lady Rose. This is what I uh, started this whole purchase for, <laughs> well, the ink purchase. Um, I think this is a beautiful, um, I don't know, what do we call this? A dusty, beigey pink. Um, and I don't have anything else like it. So I pulled a few inks that were kind of in the same color family. Um, Airbonne's Rui Donc, Donc, I think, you know, I need to watch that video that's out there somewhere of pronouncing all these ink names, um, is not the same, but it kind of is in the same color family. I don't know, guys, I'm not great at colors, but do you see how like this is sort of just like a coral version of this color? In my mind, anyway. <laughs> so um, there's a comparison there. Here is another Ferris Wheel Press ink, Candy Marsala. Um, I uh, backed the Ferris Wheel Press Kickstarter, like the original one. And so I do have their first three inks and then I've never bought another full size bottle because they're just so expensive. Um, and then, you know, I grabbed Garden District Azalea from Papier Plume. This is not similar at all, but I just thought Kosumosu is pretty common. And so if you wanna see just really how beige this is compared to pinks, um, I need to move things up in my frame, I'm sorry. Um, then you can kind of see how much more beige um, th it is. So there is that one. Let's see, I'm going to hate myself later when I'm having to re, I'm not gonna hate myself, to re uh, alphabetize all of these. Um, thirdly is Sailor Shikiori Yoko. Oh, Rudy, hush. I'm sorry, that's my dog. Rudy, stop. Okay, he thinks there's somebody at the door and there's not. I apologize. <laughs> um, whew, that scared me. Um, here is Yozakura, Sailor Shikiori Yozakura. I... Rudy, please stop. You hear somebody outside, I'm sorry. Um, so, uh, yeah, this is a really pretty, like, dusty, light purple. And for comparison, I have Van Diemen's Tasmania and Snowy Mountain Sunset, which is a um, sh shimmery, <laughs> why couldn't I come up with that word? This is a gorgeous ink, um, very similar in color um, to me. Um, and then everything else I have in this color family is darker. I really like this color family, as you can see, um, but they're all darker. So we're gonna have to see how this one flows in a pen. Man, I just can't find the middle of my uh, my frame here. Um, Papier Plume Desire, uh, it's a little redder. Of course it's darker, all these are darker. 
Alt Bordeaux is kind of similar, just darker. Um, again, a little redder. Um, here is a comparison to Poissier de Lune um, from Airbon. You can see how much darker it is, and um, but a similar tone, I would say. Is tone the right word, guys? I'm not a color expert. Anyway, I'm very excited to try this ink and a pen. Um, what is kind of similar, not really, but sort of, I was trying to get a few inks in the same kind of color family as Lady Rose, and apparently I really failed, but is Sailor Ink Studio 237. Um, not the same, but, you know, they could be next to each other. <laughs> um, here is Sailor Ink Studio 237. I really also have nothing similar to this ink. So this is really gorgeous. Um, and if you notice how bad my, uh, writing is on these, it's because I broke the tip of my glass nib pen. So, um, that's why, uh, the si most similar I have here is Airbon Bouquet d'Anton. Bouquet d'Anton. Um, I sang a lot in French in choir and I don't know why I can't remember it. Um, those are kind, pretty similar. Um, you can see down towards the bottom, the lighter color, um, you know, really, the lighter color in the Sailor is very similar to the darker part of the Airbon ink. So, um, that's a good match. Um, for comparison's sake, here is Monteverde Rose Pink, which is a lot more, uh, neon-y purple. Um, and then Monteverde Gratitude, again, not the same. And, uh, Airbon... Airbon Larmes la 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 Larmes de Cassis. Um, again, not the same, but I'm just giving you a comparison. So, um, yeah, I this is one of my most favorite inks of all time. So, um, anyway, there's a comparison on all those. I'm excited to get that into a pen as well. Um, next up is a bright pink Sailor Ink Studio. 431. I've been wanting to try this ink for a long time. Um, it is gorgeous and my neighbor's AC just kicked on so I'm sorry if you hear that. Um, I live in an apartment guys and uh, we hear everything around here. So um, anyway 431. Um, you can see it is not similar to any of these and my only comparison that I have is Noodler's Rachmaninoff. Um, which is more, uh, a little more purple and more neon, um, but similar, especially down here. Up here, this one is more red and this one is more purpley, um, purpley pink, I guess, but they are similar here. So, um, Noodler's Rock Mononoff is one that I do not own a bottle of. I'm not even sure if I still have a sample, but I need, I'm looking at my samples. Um, I need to get some if it still exists because I really enjoyed this ink in a broad nib. So that's that one. Um, in the same, uh, line is Sailor 731. So 431, 731. So, um, it's a kind of a darker version of that one. Um, and this is a really pretty pink. I thought it was going to be similar to... Lamy Vibrant Pink. Um, it is not, and I will see if I can get to it quickly enough to show you. Why do I do this to myself every single time? Um, not. Vibrant Pink was really, like, hyped, and I am not in love with it. So, I mean, I've only inked it in a pen maybe twice, but um, I need to try it some more, but it's not very vibrant to me. So, this is much more vibrant. Um, it's got a little more of that red tone. It's got a little bit of a uh, goldy sheen to it, like an orangey gold sheen. Can you see that a little bit? Um, for comparison, I have Diamine Scarlet, which is a little bit darker and redder, but has that similar golden sheen um, where it's really kind of heavy right there. And Colorverse Girls Just Wanna. This is one that someone sent me a sample of and I have really enjoyed it. I bought a big bottle of it and um, have used it quite a bit. Y'all know I love my pink inks. This one, Girls Just Wanna, don't, doesn't have any sheen to it. Um, but uh, 
a pretty good little comparison there. So there's the 731, and then here's the 431 um, to compare as well. And then just three more. Let's see. Oh, I skipped uh, Shikiori, Sailor Shikiori Fuji Sugata. Um, it's a really pretty uh, purple, bluish purple. <coughs> A lot of people would probably say purplish blue, but I think it is more purple than blue. Um, this one, I ended up with a lot of similar ones to it. Apparently I like purple. So um, here is, let's see, Waterman Tender Purple. Roar and Clean Narcassia is darker um, and a little bluer maybe. Um, Iro Shizuku Murasaki Shikibu is a little redder. Pavia Plume Violet is a little bit darker but very similar. Omas Purple, which is not available anymore, but I still thought I'd throw it in there. Very, very similar. Um, but actually still a little bit darker in the writing. Um, Monteverde Amethyst um, is quite similar. Diamond Imperial, Imperial Purple is a lot more red. Um, and so is Nagasawa, Nagasawa Kobe Hime Ajisai, which I really like, um, is a little bit more red. So probably the most similar would be the Monteverde Amethyst, um, which I own a bottle of, and it is a lot cheaper than this one. So we'll see if I'm blown away by this one. I also own a bottle of the Omas Purple, which is quite similar. It just has a little more sheen to it. Um, so... Anyway, uh, we'll see about Fuji Sugata, and then, let's see, Sailor Ink Studio 160 um, is a really pretty green. I don't know what prompted me to grab this one, but um, I just could not take it out of my cart, so I grabbed it. Um, it is just seems like a really kind of unique green to me. Um, the similar ones that I had, well, what I thought was going to be similar, is Airbon's Diablo de Mint. I'm sorry, guys, about getting out of frame. Um, it is not similar. It is a lot more blue. And then here is Airbon's Vert, Vert Reseda, which is more green, but still too blue and too dark. So I don't own anything similar to um, 160, and I'm very excited to put it in a pen. I think it's gorgeous. Um, I think I'm going to enjoy it. So um, it might go well into, no it won't. Eh, it doesn't really match that. I don't know what I'll put it in. But there is that one. Last but not least, Sailor Ink Studio 770. This is one that Mike Hurley mentioned on the Pen Addict um, as a very usable, readable yellow. And I was not in the market for a usable, readable yellow. But when I was already placing an order from Goulet Pens, I decided to go ahead and grab a sample. So the two that I have for comparison are Roar and Klingner Helianthus. Um, I do really like this color. It is a very, um, also very usable, readable yellow, in my opinion. Um, not in very fine nibs, obviously, but um, it's obviously more orange, you know, a little darker. But that's, I have that one for comparison, and Airbon's Bouton d'Or, um, which is more bright and not as readable. So um, here are those three. Sailor Ink Studio 770 is this ink. So um, that is it for me. I... <laughs> Um, I'm anxious to go and watch this and see if I um, had anything in frame the entire <laughs> video. That is not the right new pin. Um, but I hope I did. And I hope you enjoyed this uh, little overview of a few new things to my collection. Um, which, again, I don't love to call a collection. But nevertheless, I have amassed a collection. So anyway, um, please let me know what you think about these inks. Are any of these your favorites? Have you also had a bad experience with this Airbond ink? Um, do you have a good red brown that you can recommend to me? Because I um, like those warm browns. Um, I hope everyone has a great day. And I thank you so much for, uh, for
for watching my video and for um, commenting and just jumping into this community. I'm so excited to um, be a part of this YouTube community and um, yeah, there we go. Thank you all. Have a good day. Bye.